Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Hey. Hey. Oh, word. Wait, wait. Hey, I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. Uh, he's a level three whiskey sommelier. He's a master mage. Eagle rare. Some people kind of like it. There's a few. Yeah. I'm one of them. What? I like their font choice and their bottle design too. Spoilers. Spoilers. Oh, spoilers. Oh, I like whiskey. Spoiler alert. <laughs> All right, we're drinking Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare. Now, Eagle Rare, there's a couple of bars in town. One of them, Jack Allen's, or restaurants in town. Yeah. This is what I go get every time I go to Jack Allen's. I often see this one on uh, people's favorites list. Yeah, it's a 10-year-old bourbon from Buffalo Trace. Mm -hmm. And it used to be single barrel. Notice that they removed the single barrel marker on it uh, because they quit bottling it by hand and moved it to a bottling line. Okay. And once you've moved it to the bottling line, you're depending on machines to pull the whiskey from the barrels. So it's not just one barrel. And so there's a chance that sometimes you'll end up with a bottle that is a mix of a couple of barrels. Right. And so you can't use the single barrel moniker anymore. All right. Um, so, the single, so, so the single barrel moniker, that mm -hmm. gets people excited, but... It's like, okay, you got something that says single barrel. It doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Well, here's the thing. It, it says single barrel, fine. Mm -hmm. And we do know that different barrel placements in different um, parts of the warehouse. That makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. So if you get something that says single barrel and you adore it. You may not be able to get it again. The fact that you get another, the same brand, it also says single barrel, it could be a different part of the warehouse. Now, on the, on the other hand, people who are really focused on single barrel selections, yeah. they know that, yeah. and they're choosing their single barrels from one specific part of the warehouse. So they have like, what, it's like a, a map of the yeah, and they know the top <laughs> the top floors, the bottom floors, middle floors. That's why the Knob Creek ones, or it's not Knob Creek, wow. is it Knob Creek? Anyway, it's one of the brands where they're pulling only those bottles from the certain spot in the warehouse so we need to, for flavor consistency. We need to release a map of all 10 floors of our distillery. All 10 floors. And is it like a Mary Poppins and distillery? <laughs> all 24 of our uh, warehousing facility. Yeah, that's right. Floors. Now, I really like oh. Eagle Rare. Yes. This is Mash Bill 1 from Buffalo Trace, which you can look up. It's a low rye mash. Yeah, I like that a lot on the nose. Well, in theory, it's a low rye mash, but... Um, apple springs to mind. Apples red sweetened. See, that's weird, because you got apples. I got orange. You got orange? No, I don't get orange. I'm getting a burn in my nose, though. Yeah, I'm going in hard and deep. Yeah. <laughs> You just let that one go. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not touching that one. <laughs> oh, we're so mature now. Because there is a moment in like a couple episodes ago where you said, it's like licking wood. I did. I did, and Rex didn't do anything. <laughs> no. That's okay. I'm growing and maturing as a person. But good job is what that means. Good job, licking wood. Honey. Yeah. Absolutely. Now here's the thing. There's sort of a waxy nut flavor to the aftertaste of this one. And I think that's actually why I like it. It reminds me of candied walnuts. Mm-hmm. Right? So you get, you ever have just straight walnuts you crack out of a, it's always, I always say this about Dalmore, that the aftertaste of eating a nut that just fell off a tree, like a fresh one, yeah. is that you get this really meaty yeah, nut yeah. flavor, but then afterwards it sort of, your mouth sort of tastes waxy yeah. and dry. And I get that in the end of Dalmore. I get that in the end of Eagle Rare. This sort of thin, waxy kind of note. You ever just filled your mouth with nuts? <laughs> yes. Just like a chipmunk. Just I'm trying to take it back. Gobbled down the nuts. Yeah, like a chipmunk. No, not chipmunk. Just packed it into your cheek. Oh, <laughs> uh, so uh, Eagle Rare, uh, man. There's just nothing wrong with Eagle Rare. Man, I, if it's, I was at a bar and I needed any go-to bourbon I knew I could count on, Eagle Rare would top the list. So on, on, in terms of it being you know, thin and light and then kind of r rich and robust, mm -hmm. this is leaning towards rich and robust. Yes. But not out of balance. It's And it ends with sort of a dry, leathery note. A little bit. I'm getting more of, well, yeah. Or like old books. Are you bringing an old book? Yeah. All right. This thing's falling apart, too. You gonna make me smell an old book? Oh, yeah, that's an old bookstore right oh, there. Dude. How old is that book? Oh, it's old. It's so old, it's coming apart at the seams. And it's called The Pictorial History of America. 
and I just grabbed it at random out of the library. Paul Owen. I hit my whiskey capacity at a dinner party the other night and opted for a smoky Coke. Yeah, there you go. Over my usual vodka and- 1856. Holy crap. 1856. Yeah. Uh, Usual, over his usual vodka and orange. Technical definition, the alcohol intake has hit my Adam's apple and any more neat booze and I'm on, I'm on the great white phone to God all night. <laughs> I must confess, Smoky Coke is my new overcapacity drink. I know, but you gotta be careful because the sugar in a Smoky it. Coke will make a hangover so much worse. Is that a thing? In my experience, I don't know if this is for everybody, but in my experience, right. when, I was, when I switch to cocktails with sugar in them, right. that's when I wake up feeling like I want to die. Uh. But a hangover from whiskey just gives me a headache. But a hangover from a cocktail makes me feel like I'm on death's door. Hmm. I mean, a bad one. Like a really, I like probably, it's just not good. You're probably drinking too much. Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah. It's just a problem that's solved. Super helpful. You know what you do instead? <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> See, that's why I haven't been working out. So I can help you. Oh, yeah, yeah. So more fat cells to store the alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Radikovic, or Radikovic. So I need some advice. A group of my buddies and I throw in around $100 for Christmas and celebrate a whiskey Christmas. We intend to get two bottles around $300 each. Yeah. What would your suggestions be? The only caveat is two of them can't handle the luscious, girthy mouthfeel. Of a strong smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you went for the mouthfeel. Luscious and girthy mouthfeel. That's right. I like that. I'm going to have to use that. Dude, you get Highland Park 12. Uh, I, I appreciate any help you can give, Rex. And I guess Daniel, since you are the uh, smallest. All right, fine. I'm out then. <laughs> so he, wait, for well, spite. With spite. I wasn't actually listening to what he said. I was just reading the words. What does he want? He Two wants bottles, 300 each. What 300 each or 300 in total? Two bottles around 300 each. You can get some damn. Wow. Yeah, dude. Well, it's his buddies throwing in 100 bucks Yeah, apiece. damn. So you're like six buddies. Um, well, shit, man. It pays to have friends. What were you going to suggest it? Well, now that it's $300, is, does is it, it, does it open up a brave new world? <laughs> yeah, it does. Well, what were you going to suggest, too, that would both be under? I mean, just any Highland Park. Would be great. No, that's like 30 bucks for the Viking No, 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 water. any Highland Park. Get one of the older special edition Highland Parks. Oh, okay. And they're not overly smoky, but they're really rich and luscious and girthy. <laughs> <laughs> Go for a good Highland. That's, I don't, I don't know, man. I, this is like having menu indecision. You put the question here. I know, but I didn't realize. I was thinking $100. I had all my thoughts prepared well, for $100 give him, each. Give them the $100 thoughts. Okay, well then go for Highland Park. Go for Glendronic for a little bit more of the rich sherry. Uh, go for Old Pulteney for some of the briny notes, or go for a good oven. Uh, go for an Abler if you want a little more punch with the sherry. Go for uh, any one of the Springbank. So Hazelburn will be a little less aggressive because it's an unpeated product from the Springbank distillery, right? And I'm assuming you're staying in Scotch. So that's why I picked all Scotch whiskeys. Um, yeah, so many options. See if you can find Ailsa Bay, which would be really hard. What about but... Dark Cove? Oh, hell yes, but that's not going to be a friend Here's to the his thing. buddies you don't like. The friend, mouth the, feel. Fr the luscious, girthy mouthfeel. The friend can't, I don't know, I don't know the dynamics of your friendship here, but if he wants one of them to not be luscious and girthy and smoky, mm -hmm. fine. But that's the good. other one, you, man, you gotta be able to, to get out there. Get a Glendronic and then get a Dark Cove. A Dark Cove. Yeah. A Dark Cove. There, this does have a bit of a sour note that hits me halfway through. Mm -hmm. And the wood sour note. And it, actually, I kind of like that. And you kind of like that. It's what makes me like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It keeps it from being too sweet, which is what I dislike about a lot of bourbons. I can't think of anything to compare this to. No, me either. Me either. Four roses. I think this is really. Th this, this feels single barrel. Single barrel four roses. Right. To me, this. Um, I think there's going to be more of a cherry note on the single barrel floor roses. Yeah, there it is. Okay. But that same kind of, sharp isn't the right word, pronounced. The same kind of pronounced sour note that presents halfway through. It's so much sweeter. There's no bitterness in that. Ooh. You know what? There's no barrel bitterness. 
For me, mm -hmm. I like the Four Roses. Yeah, I prefer the Eagle Rare. But um, now, Whoop and Holler, they have the 28 year old bourbon release from the Orphan Barrel series, and it tastes like oh. chewing on a piece of bar of barrel wood oh. with no whiskey. If you added a drop of the Whoop and Holler, right. because it's so bitter, into the Four Roses, we would probably have created Eagle Rare. I was remembering these being closer than they are. Yeah, they're not. No, nah, they're, I mean, I mean, they're both they're, great. Whiskey. They're both, they can both be categorized as classic bourbon. Yeah. Here's the thing that everybody's been concerned about, I know. Emotionally? No, we haven't spoken about it. Oh, okay. I thought we decided not to Someone speak Someone bought a new shirt. <gasps> no one wanted to mention it. Now, did you buy it or did someone buy it for you? Uh, Target. <laughs> Goodfellow brand. <laughs> and uh, I was walking with my now wife. You're just name dropping. Just walking with my. Oh yeah, Target baby. <laughs> I'm gonna have Supreme. Tar it's gonna say Supreme. Target. Right <laughs> and uh, I was walking with my wife. She says, "What do you think of that shirt?" It's like it's not garbage. So I found this shirt at home. <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> you need new clothes, honey. <laughs> yeah, I do. So one new shirt every ten years. Is yeah, fair enough. All right. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal lovers' hearts. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.